What is a two and a half way system? Mario Rosario, ooh, I love that name, um, is asking the question. And, and Mario writes, uh, would like some explanation of a speaker consisting of a tweeter, a bass driver, and a second similar bass mid driver arranged in a two and a half way system configuration. The bass and the bass mid drivers are the same size and completely identical, so I'm imagining that the bass and the bass mid drivers are treated differently by the crossover. Is that correct? And if so, how and why? A great question. So I don't have a two and a half way to show you, but we can sort of, uh, we can sort of play here. Um, I can imagine, here's another driver, okay. So imagine that we have two drivers. We'll, we'll even put it up here, right? Let's, let's say that this mid-range on the AN speaker doesn't exist, and in fact what we have are two of these eights. Okay, that's kind of what he's referring to. So this tweeter goes to this and this, and, and that's like what we would call a two and a half way. So what's happening, and then you'll see three, three way, and, and you'll see, oh, you know, a number of drivers together. Or sometimes you'll see a number of tweeters together. In the old Infinity and Genesis designs, Arnie Nudell used to always, always, in, in many speaker designs, he would take um, three tweeters. You'd see a row of three tweeters, and uh, sometimes even five tweeters. And he was doing the same sort of thing, which I don't refer, I know the popular term is the two and a half way speaker. My terminology on that is a progressive crossover. So what are the ideas behind it? Well, if you picture what Mario was originally asking, and let's just go from tweeter to uh, our, our extra eight, here, um, and I don't want to get that magnet too close because there's other magnets in here, and then down to here. All right, so what happens is the lower woofer is essentially not on and not playing at higher frequencies. So as the frequency is, is starting at the tweeter, as it crosses over to the next driver, which is another eight, these two are the only ones that are really playing. I mean, I'm being, I'm exaggerating because it isn't quite that stark, but just, just for purposes of explanation, just so you understand, let's just imagine that it is that stark. These, this, this is only playing, and now we transition to here, and there's a crossover point, and now this one's the only one playing, and as the frequency goes down, this lower one turns on, all right? And at one point, as the frequency goes down, this one and this one are now two drivers playing the same things at low frequencies. So high driver couples to the next driver, and this one's off, and then as the frequency goes down, this one begins to turn on, and now we have two drivers producing bass. The obvious advantages to that are, are relatively simple. One, it's a lot easier in, at higher frequencies to cross over between two closely coupled drivers because we know that as the frequency goes up, the wavelength goes down. So there's very small waves coming out of here and then bigger waves out of the mid-range and then even bigger waves out of the mid-base, right? So coupling them so that they all kind of sound seamless is a lot easier when the two are very close together and you're not trying to extend them way down like this. So as we hand off from this to this, and then finally to that, this works because when we're at lower frequencies, we'd like to have multiple drivers. The, just to make a big generalization, the more drivers we have playing at low frequencies, the more low frequency energy that we can produce. So essentially you'd have like twin woofers, right? So that's how that works. Now, I had mentioned Arnie and the way he used to do that with tweeters. Well, he did the same thing with tweeters. So with tweeters, he would have one in the middle, if there were three, he'd have one in the middle that would cover you know, the highest frequencies, and then as the frequency went down, uh, it would, he could have them on top or he could have them below, it would, in, as it went down in frequency, um, the, the top one uh, turned off, 
and then the lower ones took over, and, and they, you know, if you designed it right, would then reproduce the lower treble frequencies together, and you'd get the coupling of multiple tweeters. So as it went up, then it went to a single point, and then your ear, you know, uh, had a lot easier time dealing with that transition instead of having a long row of tweeters trying to do the same thing all at once. So it's, it's trying to take it up to a point source as best you can using a progressive crossover. Hope that uh, answers your question. All right, thanks, bye.